Hey, hey, it's me, Maggie J. Today, with another recap and review from the second season of American Horror Stories, this second episode is called Aura. This Aura machine is basically one of those electric doorbells that records and you can communicate through it and such. You probably have something similar yourself. I do not because I'm cheap and I don't want to answer my front door ever. This is another winner of an episode for me. It might have been about 10 minutes longer than it needed to be to tell the same story, but I'll forgive it. This one stars Gabourey Sidibe and Max Green, better known to me as Schmidt from New Girl. I was wondering if this was going to loop back around to the Coven season like the first episode did, you know, because she was in that season as well. But as far as I can tell, this is a standalone story that just happens to feature someone from the Coven cast. So sorry if that's what you were hoping for. These two, Jaslyn and Bryce, are married and just moving into this new house that they bought. It's a bit further away from work than he wanted, and likely a bit more expensive because Jaslyn wanted to live in a gated community. And he's a bit peeved that she spent $200 on the Aura system, despite having armed security at the front gates. Pretty quickly we see, and she admits, that she's an anxious person and just wants to be extra safe. She also works from home, making and selling jewelry, so it's important to her that she can do what she needs to do without having to consider whether she's in danger or not. Apparently, she went through something highly traumatic as a child, where a masked person came through her window at night. We watch as she hid herself under the covers, and a moment later, a woman screams and gunshots ring out. No wonder she wants to be as safe as she can be. Time goes by, the couple settles into the house, unpacking and painting and such. Things seem to be going well. Jaslyn makes some sales of her jewelry. Bryce is working hard to cover costs. Life is great, right? Well, one night while Bryce is at some meeting, Jaslyn gets a notice from the aura, but there is no one on the other side of the video she's watching. She creeps to the door trying to figure out what's going on, but there's nothing. Nothing except a raccoon in the garbage can. I don't know why she opened up the door here. I would not have, but she must be braver than me. She ignores the raccoon and gets herself ready for bed. I notice here she's using an electric toothbrush, but not using the electric part, just manually scrubbing at her teeth. (laughs) I bet the toothbrush sound was so loud that it interfered with the alert chime on her phone. This is totally not important. I just find it amusing. Anyway, that chime that interrupts her brushing her teeth is another notice from Aura, activity at the front door. She opens the link and and now sees an old haggard man calling her by name and asking her to open the door. She's able to communicate with him through the app, asking him what he wants and telling him to leave. She's going to call the police. He tries the door handle. She yells at the front door for him to go away and then actually calls the cops. We cut to when Bryce returns from his meeting. The police are all over his neighborhood and inside his house talking to his wife. The neighbor from across the street comes by to let them all know he has a security camera that monitors the roadway and Jaslyn and Bryce's front door. Creepy. They rush over to his house and watch the footage, but there is no one that shows up on their front porch after the raccoon incident, but before the cops show up. The aura machine also didn't record the man on the porch. So suddenly, Jaslyn looks like a crazy person who's letting their anxieties get the better of them while they're alone. The cops leave, and she's left wondering, what the hell happened? The next night, or another night, it's not clear, the couple is sitting on the couch having a night together. Jaslyn keeps checking her phone for no reason, but suddenly she gets a notification, and this time Bryce is able to see that she's not just being crazy and imagining or dreaming this, there is someone on their porch begging for his sweet Jaslyn to open the door. Bryce nearly opens the door, but Jaslyn stops him, giving him an extra moment to think. He calls the neighbor to check his cameras and finds out there is no one on their porch. The guy is gone from the app's feed. Bryce opens the door and sees that there's nobody there. Bryce argues this must be a prank. Someone has hacked the aura system and is doing this to random people. Later, Jaslyn does some online searching but doesn't find any pranks that mimic her experience. She remembers something from high school, though, about a janitor her and her friends used to make fun of who kind of fell in love with Jaslyn and pestered her with his affections until he disappeared from school very shortly after. He called her My Sweet Jaslyn and kind of even looks like the janitor guy. Bryce does not believe that they could be the same person, but Jaslyn does some more searching and takes a long drive to Mr. Hendrick's former address where his sister now lives. He used to live there but disappeared a few months ago. She's able to get a photo of Hendrick's from the sister and it's him, the guy on the aura. 
So since he's missing and is big into computers, according to his sister, Bryce and Jaslyn assumed he's figured out a way to hack the system and target her because he's still obsessed with her. When she gets home, almost immediately she gets a notification and sees Hendrix on her porch, begging her to open the door. Wanting to end this, she asks him what will happen. Hendrix assures her she will be fine. He just wants to see her. So she opens the door, but no one is there. Back inside with the door closed and locked, she turns to see the man is now in her kitchen. He admits he lied to her and he's here to do more than just see her. And immediately we're led to believe he's going to do terrible stuff to her. But he just apologizes about how he treated her in high school. He thought he was in love and didn't know how to handle it. He doesn't ask for forgiveness. He's just thankful he could make his peace with her. She, in turn, apologizes to him for being rude all those years ago and asks if they could forgive each other. He smiles. This is way more than he could have expected. But then some grotesque sounds can be heard and blood starts to trickle from his eyes. He sinks to his knees and explodes in a puff of smoke. In the next scene, Jaslyn is watching the news. Hendrick's body has been found floating in a river. It's suspected he jumped off a bridge and was not discovered until just after his aura encounter with Jaslyn. This is an interesting twist for me. Is the aura system some kind of lost soul Ziggy machine? Kind of crazy. I love a weird twist, but there's still 15 minutes left, which is a lot of time in this universe. There's definitely one, maybe even two more twists coming. I can feel it. When Bryce gets home from work, she doesn't tell him about her letting Hendrix in and him poofing out after they forgive each other. Shortly after him arriving, Jaslyn receives another notice from the aura, and this time a woman is standing there, very confused and wondering where she is. She says she was at Grace Park, and she can't remember what happened after that. Bryce runs down the stairs and yanks her phone out of her hand. He yells at the screen for the woman to fuck off, but she's gone. He opens the door, rips the aura off, and throws it into the trash can. So... Jaslyn takes another trip to Grace Park and finds a bench dedicated to a woman who died in 2002. She goes home to Bryce and tells him about Mary Jean Burkett, who was run over by a drunk driver at Grace Park and is who showed up on the aura. He's upset that she's still bothering with that, but she tells him she's been doing some research into this and thinks that woman was there to see him. She shows him a video talking about the claims made by a small number of Aura users where someone appears to be at their door asking for the person to open up. It just so happens all of these encounters involve a final message that needed to be delivered. She tells Bryce she let Hendrix in the other day and all he wanted to do was apologize. Mary Jean Burkett must be here to see him and she wants to know why this woman has reason to do that. He claims he doesn't know her. He doesn't know what she could want. Then the doorknob starts to rattle, and he confesses that she was his fiance. <sighs> they were at Grace Park. He was trying to break up with her, and she ran away from his car, so he left the park and never saw her again. He says the guilt eats him up, but he doesn't know what happened to her. Jaslyn opens the door so they can find out what she wants. Mary appears right next to him, holding a baby, saying... This could have been your son. He has to further confess she was pregnant and he was trying to break up with her. He didn't want a baby at all. She needed to handle this, so she got out of the truck and refused to get back in. They argued in the street and somehow she got ran over by a truck, like a step or two away from his vehicle. The other vehicle kept on going, but Mary was left in the street, bloody and mangled, but not dead. She asked Bryce to help her. So he stepped on her neck until it cracked and she stopped breathing. My God, bro. Done with his confessions, he knows he now has to kill Jaslyn, lest he be held accountable for murdering his fiance and child. Yeah, I don't know how murder covers up murder, but okay. He fetches a fireplace poker thing and approaches Jaslyn, but before he can attack, Mary somehow takes his life away from him and he poofs into nothing like the other guy did. Three months later, Jaslyn has moved into a new apartment where every unit is required to have an aura for insurance or whatever. She has not used aura since her last encounter and almost immediately she gets a notification. On the other side of the door is her husband screaming that she's never going to get away from him and demanding that she open the door. And that is the end of the episode. <laughs> this was a pretty good one. Jaslyn has seen both the good and bad outcome of letting one of these spirits in, so letting Bryce in could go either way for her. But he's so angry and yelly, I wouldn't let him in. This is not the face of someone who wants to apologize for being a liar and complete fucking scum. 
I do have to wonder why he's here, though. What did she do to him? Open the door for Mary? Find out that he killed his pregnant fiance? Like, does that mean she deserves to poof into nothing? There seem to be some rules being established here, but this doesn't make much sense when applied to the overall story. Also... Was there an investigation into what happened to Bryce? Like, did his dead body show up somewhere? Or is he just a missing person now? Are there a lot of people who have gone missing or whatever since the launch of Aura? The inclusion of the home invasion and her parents being killed when she was a child, I thought it was a weird add after all of this and everything that had happened because it really didn't add to the storyline at all. But they made sure that we saw this person you know, coming through the window and standing there in in her room as a child. They showed us this mask. Is this somebody that we're going to see again? I, I just have a feeling. This is a story that makes you wonder for a while after it's over, but it gets weirder the longer that you think about it. So don't spend too much time on this. Overall, I give it three stars. This season is off to a much better start than the last. So I'm kind of getting excited for the future episodes. Not too excited though. I know better, but that is all that I have to say about this. I gotta go get ready for Reservation Dogs season two and see if I can possibly crank out maybe two episodes a week. I don't know. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to enjoy the rest of your day and stay safe out there. Oh, don't forget to like and subscribe. Okay, bye.